Welcome back to Middle Grounders. We have Ron Karen on the line, a man who has uh, made a lot of uh, allegations about the LDS Church, again, about uh, a general authority sexually abusing his daughter, and furthermore, the LDS Church going to some lengths to cover it up. Uh, Ron, are you on the line? Yes, thank you, Tyson. Okay, terrific. Welcome to the show. I really appreciate you being open to, uh, to being on the show, first of all. And, uh, you know, I don't know Matter if you talk... Matter of fact, I, could I just start with one clarification with that introduction? Yeah, please. Um, it, yes, it, it must be clear. This is very crucial. Um, I do not qualify to make an accusation against Elder Mickelson. Uh, I did not make the accusation against him um, because the only person who can qualify to make that accusation is my daughter. Now, she, even, even though she qualifies to accuse him... She did not accuse him. And in the evidences that are going to be released today, it will show that Elder Mickelson accused her of being promiscuous with him at age six. Now, my daughter is not countercharging. She is not disagreeing. Um, she fully agrees with him to the extent that there was promiscuity between them. Now, she stepped up to the plate um, with the details of that promiscuity, it is his turn to step up to the plate and share his side of the story. Wow. Thank okay. You. No, thank thank you for making that clarification. I think that's important yeah. because uh, and, and it's important for um, those reporting this story out there to so that we're getting off um, on the right foot. That that this detail be clarified. A shout out to Micah McAllister who got it right. You know, out there. Um, Stating that it was the general general authority who accused the six well not just the six year old girl but two six year old girls. Thank you. Oh no, you're absolutely you're absolutely welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that because I had only seen your video right, and so uh, honestly, you know, going through there, it, it really tears me two different directions. You know, and so you know, I don't really know where to stand, and I don't want to talk about it too much. I want to be able to uh, ask you some questions. I told you I'd have you on. I've got some questions I for sure want to ask. Um, right. First one, uh, Lloyd, cue up cue, uh, number one. Elder Mickelson made the first accusation against not one, but two six-year-old girls claiming that they were promiscuous with him, never providing any detail of what they actually did to him. Okay, so that's directly from your video, and you just uh, said that as well. Is there anything you want to add to that? You know, I didn't hear it. I'm not hearing that at all. So oh, okay. I, uh, you'll have to share the content with me. Okay, cool. Um, basically, it was just a recording in your video, which I'm sure you're familiar with, where it talks about Elder Mickelson um, not molesting one, but two six-year-old girls. Uh, do you want yeah. to elaborate on that at all? or I mean, you're saying um, two girls. Do you have two daughters? Or? There are key points to this accusation, of four or five key points, but uh, it, it will be uh, clearly detailed in the evidence released uh, that will go out later uh, this afternoon, this evening. Okay, fantastic. Would it be okay if we uh, share that evidence release on our, on our fan page? You've got it. You've okay. Absolutely. Terrific. Uh, you know, since this video, Ron, I've, I've gone and kind of looked around a lot of different, uh, you know, social media groups, things like that. Uh, you know, you have LDS people who are obviously up in arms, and they're certainly leaning toward the church, uh, you know, as, as is understandable. Uh, and you have ex-Mormon people who are, you know, certainly up in arms and, and leaning toward you. But I was really surprised because there was a lot of ex-Mormon people that, um, that aren't buying it. And, and I don't know why that is, and I'm hoping this might be something that, uh, you know, that they can, uh, you know, provide more information for them, and quite honestly, provide more information for me as well. Uh, just a Cliff Notes version, and I'll go to the second clip. You know, I know you talked about a divorce, I know you talked about the church being involved in your divorce, and things like that. And, uh, you know, some people in the ex-Mormon community are saying, hey, this guy is just, uh, he's just bitter, he's mad, blah, blah, blah. And so, uh, anyway, Lloyd, cue up number two. This explains Elder Scott's orchestration of my divorce. Did you hear that one, Ron? Yes, I did. Fantastic. All right, so I understand Elder Mickelson was your father-in-law, and I understand that there, you know, there's some accusations there. Elder Scott pops into the picture. Now I'm confused. Uh, great, yes. Elder Scott married into the family in the mid-'90s. Um, we were good friends. You know, I sat across the table from him many meals. <laughs> Uh, he was in my home uh, several times in my home. And um, 
So how in does order that... to understand that, and you will see this in the evidence, is in order, or, order to understand his involvement, you must understand Boyd K. Packard's The Unwritten Order of Things. Okay. There is an unwritten order of things for the um, rank and file, and there's an unwritten order of things for the general authority. Uh, as Mickelson stated to me many times, and this, is, this obviously is hearsay, but okay. it is, it, we live it, um, he, is, uh, he is owned by the church. Um, as a general authority, and he liked to go out and say this, they are my bosses, um, but, but in something uh, this crucial, he would not have made any decisions but by his superior, and his superior would, you know, is Elder Scott, number one, because he's such a close friend, uh, number two, because he's uh, superior to him in, in ranking, but number three, he is superior to him because of the... Um, that's where the Spanish Bible comes in. He was called by Elder Scott to assist him in heading up that uh, translation committee. All right. So would I be correct in assuming then uh, Elder Scott's involvement can't really be, be proven, but that you've ar arrived there from a logical conclusion that you've derived from the experiences you've had and whatever evidence you have? Is, is, that, is that fair? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, th this is an easy one, too. Uh, he, um, my son, when they were taken up to the, uh, to what I call the Mickelson compound, uh, a, a large estate up in uh, Idaho, Idaho Falls, okay. my son walked in on the meeting um, that Elder Scott was there presenting to all of the siblings and to their spouses. Um, that was on, I think, Pioneer Day of 2006. Um, right after that meeting, 60 pages of affidavits came in from these spouses um, and siblings who were at that meeting. Um, I reached out to, to contact Elder Scott, but um, have but received no response. Interesting. All right. Um, okay, let's, let's go to that compound in Idaho. Um, yeah, right. You said your kids were hauled off there. In fact, could you queue up number okay. three, Lloyd? Shortly thereafter, discovered that my children were hauled away to the Mickelson compound west of Idaho Falls for three weeks. Okay. So, forgive me, but I'm, I'm a dad too, right? And so when I think about my kids getting hauled off, if my wife kind of went wackadoodle and went off the left, you know, out in left field somewhere, I'd be calling the police or something. You know, what, what, what did you do there? Um, got an attorney for one. Um, when I received the papers, you know, you, uh, you, you must realize I had just received, after 17 years of marriage, and as I stated on the, that tape, we kissed, we had family prayers, we, you know, we did the whole Mormon thing. Two hours later, literally, I was served papers, so I was really taken aback. But um, those papers were to evict me from my home. I was accused of child abuse, um, uh, beating my kids. Um, and so there was a legal proceeding in, in place. If I were to call the police, what am, I, what am I going to do? Go up and take a gun and charge into the house and get my kids? There's a legal proceeding in place. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe if so. you're in Oregon, you could. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, sorry, let me, let me divert there. So there's a, there's a child abuse charge against you when, when that happened or what? Oh, no, not a charge. Yeah, it's just the affidavits that came out of um, out of the Mickelson camp from this meeting with Elder Scott, and and okay. and the most damaging came from his daughter Marilyn Scott, um, okay. and so yeah, it's just it, it started to get messy at that point, and so but no, I couldn't have charged up there and got my kids and called the police. They're gonna the first question the police are gonna ask is, well, are there leader, uh, legal proceedings? Um, right, that that makes sense. Okay, that makes a lot more yeah. sense now. I mean. You know, because to a lot of us, all we hear is, you know, they took the, you know, under the Mickelson compound, and then three weeks went by, you know, without your kids. And, you know, uh, most yeah, of us yeah, are just yeah. sitting out here going, well, wait, before we jump on your side or jump on the church's side or take any side at all, like, we don't understand. Like, we, we'd be going crazy. Um, yeah, I, yeah, the kids came back from that, uh, from that experience, and I sat down, and I put a recorder in the middle of the table. It got me in trouble in court. Um, for oh. doing that, I didn't know that you were not supposed to do that. But I got statements from the kids what took place, and it just, they, they just... Mm -hmm. um, talked about the family members that sat them down. Um, these are children that sat them down and tried to convince them of things that I did and how bad their father was. 
they went to the extent of getting my mother involved to write my children a letter. And fortunately, my oldest son, he intercepted that letter and, uh, and uh, brought it to my attention. Okay. All right. Well, listen, we've got to take a commercial break here in just a second. Um, before we do, I want to leave you with something to think about because that'll be my next question. Lloyd, will you play number four? After three threats of excommunication, if I didn't remain silent about the molestation of two six-year-olds, I gave them an ultimatum. If they didn't have my records off the church rolls within two weeks, I was going public with my evidences. Okay. So that right there raises a lot of questions to me. Lloyd, how much time we Right. Got? Okay. So we had about 50 seconds. So go ahead and cover a little bit of that for me. And then we'll, we'll pick up the rest of it after the break. Yeah, it is pretty clear. The local leaders were involved in this, um, in the orchestration uh, of this divorce four months before I knew. Remember, again, I had no idea this divorce was coming, but my family members knew. My, uh, the Bishop Donaghy, our family bishop, knew. Uh, state President Mark Rogers knew. And it was, it was finally with the State President Rogers that he was trying to force me to you shut up about the uh, about the scenario. Okay. So I went. Let's hold that thought. And... Got to run to break. Um, I'm going to actually keep you on so we can ask you a couple more questions because this is uh, this is actually pretty helpful. Uh, you guys are watching Middle Grounders. We'll see you in about three minutes. Middle Grounders, where we look at the okay. actual facts.